Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I hope everybody's doing well. This is going to be part three of my very new beginners watercolors tutorials because I love my beginners. I love introducing this medium. It's so beautiful to um, new students. I just think it's so, so much fun. So what we're going to do today, if you haven't yet, um, go back to one and two because that'll go over your supplies and um, we went over thick and thin lines. So go ahead and do those first before uh, you step into this one. And these few classes so far, by the way, are just really, I'm sharing with you the brush strokes that are most common for florals. So we went through the thin line, the thick line, and by the way, I'm using this Princeton uh, number eight round. If you, I said this in the first video when I talked about supplies, and I can send you my supply list too if you like. Uh, I like the eight round, it's just a good size for me. Although take note, different. so this is a Princeton. If you were to buy a number eight in a different brand, it may be a different size. That's not like a standard across all brushes. Similar, but not a standard. Um, so the number eight round is really great for getting those thin lines, the thick lines, and creating that tapered line which let me just go over that real quick because it is a line I use constantly in my florals. And it's also called a compound stroke, combination stroke, and it's used just to create this beautiful tapered line um, that is really key to your leaves and your petals and things. So we're going to, I just got my paintbrush wet here, and have your two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse. And then I'm just tapping off some of that excess water. By the way, this palette was a custom palette from um, Mist Ceramics. I have several of her palettes, I love them, and I can link her for you as well. So we're starting with the tip of our brush and we're going to paint a fine line and as i move across the paper i'm going to begin pressing down so i get this thickness in the bristles in the barrel of the brush and it creates a gradually thick line right so let's just do that so laying the tip of my brush down creating that thin line resting my hand on my paper and then as I move to the right brushing across the paper I'm pressing down more and more and more and more I'm getting the full thickness of this brush and then as I keep going I begin lifting 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 as I continue moving to the right pick up my brush and there's a perfect thin line let's see if I can get that line a little darker I feel like it might be a little hard to see. So I'm darkening the value I'm using so you can see, and this is a ultramarine blue. And let's try that again, okay? So you don't wanna lift your brush up until you get to the tip of your brush and then you lift up, all right? So it's gonna be like this elongated eyeball shape, okay? So let's do it again. Tip of my brush, moving to the right, pressing down, widening out. As I continue moving, I'm lifting my brush till I'm just at the very tip, okay? Now let's play around with this stroke and just kind of see some different shapes you can make because we can use this for petals, for leaves, um, for all kinds of stuff. So let's just play around with it a little bit. And I'm going to refer to this as a compound stroke. So let's try point, press, and lift up. So now we've got this fun little leaf or petal shape. 
and you can go back through it like that. Let's do maybe a teardrop. So point, moving to the right, press down, and lift up before you get all the way to the point. Now I'm kind of going back in and I'm just filling it up. So there's like an elongated tear shape, okay? Let's do, and that might be used for, uh, gosh, this is a petal. It could also be a eucalyptus leaf. Um, this could be a long daisy petal. Matter of fact, in my class, I'm running on July 11th. Uh, it's very small. I want to keep it small and intimate so I can talk with all of you. It's an hour long and um, we're going to do a lot of these shapes, but I'm going to get to work with you and you can show me what you're doing. Stop me, ask me questions. So I think it's important when you're doing these to practice going point, press, lifting up like that. And doing it the opposite direction too is important because you're not always going to be making petals and leaves that go to the right. So practice going to the left as well. Now, many times I will turn my paper, point, press, and lift up. Now, if I want to get a leaf with more of that elongated point at the end, I'm just going to keep dragging my brush like I did here until I get to the tip of my brush and lift up. Here, I kind of ended before I got to the tip of my brush. So for those real fun leaves that are very long and flowy or even some petals, you can do something like this. Let me grab a little bit more paint so you can see. So let's try that again. And I'm using my paint in a tea consistency, not quite as thick as milk, but uh, like paint, like a tea. So resting my palm, my brush is about one o'clock, point, moving my hand, pressing as I continue moving, and lifting up to get that fun leaf. So if this was your branch, point, press, lift up, okay? But remember, if you don't keep moving till you get to the tip of your brush, you can also create these, point, press, just like that. So there's all different leaves. These are going to look more like uh, a eucalyptus or a round petal. Now where I would use this teardrop shape could be in say a um, daisy. So let's do the little piece that kind of sticks up and then coming out of the sides are point, press, like that. Point, press, just like that. Point press, point press. One more, point press. So that's where you might use those daisies and you could go all the way around if you wanted to do a daisy full on. So very, very important to get this uh, combination stroke or compound stroke um, in your muscle memory and to practice it all the time. The next stroke I wanna show you is the C curve, but make sure that you've really mastered those thin strokes like this, using the tip of your brush, very lightly moving your entire hand across the page. And then you've practiced a little bit thicker. So for the little bit thicker, you're going to press a little bit more and that'll give you a little bit thicker. And then combining those into this compound stroke. Thin, thick, keep moving, thin, push down, lift up, but keep moving and push down. So you're getting this beautiful stroke that you can use for flowers, for petals. It's really important to practice those and then practicing as well 
the teardrop shape, which would be point, press, like that, and coming the other direction as well. Now, like I said, I tend to turn my page because it's really hard for me to go to the left. So I would probably place my hand like this. I'm trying to keep my hand out of your way as well. Point, press, like that. But that's a little bit more awkward for me, and that's going to be that way depending on if you're left or you're right-handed. And then you could even practice that little fat leaf. So point, press. Point, press. So you've got this little tapered side and then the fat side. Okay, so practice that over and over and over till you get all those different types of elongated uh, compound strokes. You get the short fat ones and the teardrop ones because you're going to use all of those in your flowers, in your petals. So now the next stroke I want to show you is the C stroke and what you're basically doing is you're painting a curve that resembles the letter C. You're using the tip of your brush and you're getting a little bit thicker in the middle, but let's just practice that C stroke. So typically I start at the top. I'm very light pressure, hands resting on my paper, using the tip, coming around to a C, just like that. Now I might do one come facing the other direction, point, just like that. And this is actually what I use when I'm starting my roses. So this C stroke is very, very common. So that right there is the middle of your C, of your rose. It could also be used for your petals. What we want to do now is we're going to try and thicken the middle, okay? And I'll show you why. So point, start pressing, keep moving until you're on the tip, just like that. Let's practice that again. And you're gonna to wanna, to, uh, you know, at the end of this video, practice page full of these because the more you develop this muscle memory and you know, I hold down a little bit farther on my brush so I have more control. Practice resting your hand and moving your hand because if you're not resting your hand, or me anyway, my hand's gonna be shaking all over the place. So I rest my hand. And then practicing left to right, you might practice going from the bottom to the top, which is very challenging for me, so I don't do that often. Um, but let's, let's try this compound stroke or combination stroke, thin, thick stroke, whatever you want to refer to it as in a different direction. Point, press, up to a point. Now, if you can see, that is a little bit more challenging for me because I'm right-handed. And so you want to start it with the tip of your brush press to the full thickness of your brush, bristles down, and then around the C curve, finishing with the tip, okay? And you wanna make sure when you're lifting it up, so point, press, you're controlling that tip because if you let go too fast, the brush tip is gonna flick and you're gonna get this little feathery edge, so you don't want that. Now, keep in mind also, that although it's referred to as a C stroke, it really isn't always an exact C stroke. It may be an elongated C stroke, point, press, something like that. Um, it could be a uh, curve on both ends like we're doing. It's just resembling that C stroke and Let's see, let's try here. With the roses, you're doing a C stroke and it's kind of ruffly on the edges. So you might do something like this. Point, press, and come around. 
So that might be a rose petal. Point, press, something like that. So it's just resembling that C stroke, that motion. And for some petals, because I don't like my petals to be absolutely perfect, I like them to be a little bit ruffly and organic looking. So you just wiggle the brush a little bit. So here's the center of our rose, which is really tight. And then as we get bigger, point, press, and see, I have to kind of go back and make that point. And there's a really beautiful rose petal. Point, press, wiggle your brush. You could even do your leaves like this because not all leaves are perfect. Let me pick up some green. I don't know why, but I feel weird painting a leaf with blue. I know it doesn't matter, but so let me just pick up some green paint here. One second. I'm getting that T consistency. And let's try a leaf using that wiggle method. So we're using that C stroke, but it's more elongated. And then we're just going to wiggle. So let's, here's our branch. Here's our leaf. Point, press, now wiggle. Look at that, what a fun little leaf that would be. Let's do that again. Let me grab a little bit more paint here. So point, wiggle, 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 like that. What a fun leaf that would be, right? And a lot of roses consist of these wiggly edges. So you can very often put two C strokes together, a right and a left to create a leaf. This would be a little bit thin for a rose leaf. So if we add on to the other side, a same type of leaf, it's going to look fatter like a rose leaf. So point, wiggle, 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 like that. Now you've got a fat leaf. Could do that here, point, Wiggle, 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 and there you go. Isn't that fun? You could even add in, maybe do one side with a little bit lighter color. Let's just try, it might have dried too much right now, but let's see. So here's a yellow I'm gonna go into. Point, wiggle, 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 like that. And now you've kind of got this two-ton, point, tone, wiggle, wiggle, and those are going to bleed together. So what a fun little um, leaf that would be. And then your petals are going to consist of two C strokes as well. So let's just do a petal here. Let me grab some pink. Or this might be red. Yeah, that's kind of like a, um, a red color. I think it's referred to as rose matter. And let's just create a petal. So point, press down. There's our petal. Now add the right side, point, and come around. And there you go. If you don't like what this is doing here, just go back and fill it in. And there you go. That's a perfect little petal. Now I like to create you know, I don't like my petals to look perfect like that. So I'm always making my petals a little bit different. Um, so practice this C stroke, do an entire page, um, get this. If you can just master the C stroke, this compound stroke, which when I do my in-person events and workshops, Believe it or not, is I know I make it look easy because it's muscle memory. My hand knows how to do this. That um, this is can be really challenging for new students. The C strokes can be challenging. So take your time, practice, practice, practice until you go to do it and your hand just knows how to do this. Um, 
If you have any questions, reach out, let me know. Again, I'm using a cold press student grade paper. I will link in the um, description below. And I love this idea. I encourage all of my students of course, I don't have it here. Darn it. I think I said it in my other studio room. But I encourage my students to buy those Artisto pads and leave all of these practices in there so you can go through and warm up, bring up, subscribe to my channel so that you can go back to this video and warm up. All right, so if you have any questions, um, just let me know, and I hope to see some of your faces in my July 11th class. I'm so excited. I'm getting ready to send out my um, little worksheets that you will get for the class. This is what we're going to be painting. I think it's going to be really fun. The swatches, brush strokes, and I'm really excited to see you guys there. All right, everybody, so this is lesson three. Make sure if you haven't watched the others, you go back and watch those first. And happy painting to you. Most of all, have fun. All right, love you guys. Bye-bye.